Welcome to Illo Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and today we're talking about how this ancient story relates to what we're doing today. If you've been aware of me for more than 15 minutes, you won't be surprised to hear that I'm not excited about the current state of generative AI, the programs and bots that write, draw, and paint for you. What you're seeing on the screen here is my rendition of the scorpion and the frog. I think it's applicable to a lot of situations like voting for politicians that hate you, victims trusting abusers, or people helping tech billionaires build things that are detrimental to society, like Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, for example. In this essay, I'm not going to address the AI company's illegal and immoral theft of intellectual property, which is happening, or the foundational problems with aggressively attacking something deeply human, which is offensive on every level, because those arguments have been made. I've got videos on those that you can watch. I'm simply going to explore the future of this technology. Five years ago, I started urging people to do things robots can't, because everything that can be automated will be automated. I was right then, and I fear that I'll be right again. I do think that there's hope, but I don't think that that hope will happen without action. First, let's talk about the story I've illustrated. So the story takes place where a scorpion approaches a frog and says, hey, I'd like to get to the other side of the river. Let me climb onto your back and you can swim me across. And the frog says, why would I let you do that? If I let you climb on my back, you'll sting me and I'll die. And the, frog, and the scorpion says, well, if I sting you, that doesn't make any sense because I would drown too. Like if you're carrying me across the river, then I would also drown. And so the frog thought about it for a minute and said, okay, yeah, that makes sense. There's no reason that you would, you know, do that. So even though the frog knew that the scorpion, you know, was a creature that stung and killed, he uh, let the scorpion on his back, started swimming across the river. Everything's going fine for a little while. Then about halfway through, the scorpion stings the frog. And the frog looks up and says, why did you do that? Now we're both going to drown. And there's a bunch of different versions of the story, but basically the scorpion replies with, it's in my nature. Um, a different version is it's in my character. Uh, there's some debate about nature versus character. But in essence, the scorpion stings the frog. The frog, you know, dies, and both the scorpion and the frog drown. Um, there's an earlier version of this story where the scorpion tries to sting a turtle and uh, can't because, you know, it hits the protective shell, and then the turtle just drowns the scorpion anyway. Uh, but the turtle survives. I kind of like that version. Um, but anyway, um, scorpion and the frog. Okay. So I've been working on this series of illustrations that I'm calling the esoteric crumble flux about things that can end us and things that we should do to avoid those ends. But what does this old story have to do with societal collapse? Well, I'd like to quote from Neil Postman, who wrote a book in 1985 called Amusing Ourselves to Death and another book in 1993 called Techopoly. Postman might be one of the most accurate predictors of our current situation. For example, his view on the computer's role of corporations' massive collection of data. Now, this is a book that he wrote in 1985. Quote, Years from now, when it will be noticed that the massive collection and speed of light retrieval of data have been of great value to large-scale organizations, but have solved very little of importance to to most people and have created at least as many problems for them as they may have solved. Now, he wrote that in 1985 when computers had green and black screens telling kids that their mom just died of dysentery while dad was out hunting squirrels. Anyway, my point is, is that the guy is good at predicting what people will end up doing with technological advances. What does this have to do with societal collapse? AI art, chat GPT, Zuckerberg, Elon Musk. Uh, let's read some quotes. And while I do this, I'll put these up on the screen if you want to read along. Neil Postman wrote, When a population becomes distracted by trivia, when cultural life is redefined as perpetual round of entertainments, when serious public conversation becomes a form of baby talk, when, in short, a people become an audience, and their public business a vaudeville act. Then a nation finds itself at risk. Culture death is a clear possibility. Seems a little alarmist, but listen to this one. And remember, this was written in 1985 when the average person didn't have a cordless phone in their home. Americans no longer talk to each other. They entertain each other. 
They do not exchange ideas. They exchange images. They do not argue with propositions. They argue with good looks, celebrities, and commercials. Okay, yeah, we're doing that more and more today with memes, emojis, and the functionally illiterate students. But how is that a societal collapse? Well, the most popular version of the likely dystopian future is Orwell's 1984, where the government becomes so oppressive that no one dares step out of line. But there's another dystopian possibility from Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, and it is infinitely more terrifying because it is definitely happening right now and has been building for a while. Neil Postman again. There are two ways by which the spirit of a culture may be shriveled. The first, the Orwellian, culture becomes a prison. The second, the Huxleyan, culture becomes a burlesque. He continues, What Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Can you say reels and TikToks? You'll recall that I talked about the possibility of societal collapse when people become disinterested in higher levels of thinking. If not, I'll link to that video so that you can watch it. I did the illustration, please read things, we're getting dumber. There is a real threat to humanity when we stop thinking for ourselves. Postman brings his point home. For in the end... He was trying to tell us, he being Huxley, he was trying to tell us that what afflicted the people in Brave New World was not that they were laughing instead of thinking, but was that they did not know what they were laughing about and why they had stopped thinking. Okay, so people being constantly entertained to the point of disinterest in thinking is obviously not great. But what does it have to do with the frog and the scorpion? Well, I don't know why we're helping this happen. Why are we defending the AI art? Why are we allowing chatbots to overtake written content? Beyond that, why are we helping them do it? Deep machine learning is getting better at making this stuff because we're helping it do that. Every person out there making cute little avatars of themselves or typing in prompts for illustrations or whatever is teaching the machines to get better at this with every AI apologist out there shilling for the easy AI access to art. I wonder if anybody has thought about the end result. My call to action is this. Do not give the scorpion a ride. You will get stung and drown. Do you think the people that own these companies care about you? Do you think these billionaires care if you get chewed up and destroyed in the process of them making more money? Scorpions will sting. It's in their nature. Billionaires who earn money more and more than they could possibly spend in 10 lifetimes and then continue to earn money will do whatever it takes to earn more money. It's in their nature. We are the frogs. They are the scorpions. And the scorpions can't get to where they want to go without jumping on our backs. The lesson holds up because the scorpion and the frog will drown together. So let's look at one application of the story. Generative AI. Robot software that creates content. I'm curious what the goal is. When we reach peak AI content saturation, when generative AI has moved past the wonky eyes and nine-fingered hands, when the AI content is indistinguishable from human-generated content, when thousands of bots produce thousands of books, poems, illustrations, animations, and movies every hour of every day, so much that humans will be overwhelmed and it'll be impossible to see it all, then we'll build AI algorithms to suggest the best AI content, and it'll still be an overwhelmingly large glut of work as the AI never sleeps and never eats and never needs a break and continues to produce. The AI will get more efficient. Thousands of movies full of Uncanny Valley CGI dead actors, digital libraries full of books written in the style of popular authors, tens of thousands of paintings all produced daily. AI will continue to produce more and more, never sleeping, eating, or taking a break. Generative AI will continue in its prime directive to produce more marketing copy, scripts, essays, books, drawings, paintings, cartoons, episodes, films, ads, and memes. Students will no longer need to do anything because everything that they do will be done by AI. It may even begin to replicate itself to meet its prime directive of producing more and more content. 
different instances of AI will niche down and become better and better at producing specific types of content. AI instances will compete with each other, both in quality and quantity. The suggestion algorithms will continue to try and give more specific content suggestions. Every surface of our homes and public places will become screens to display more of the generated content. Smart glasses and smart contacts will display picture-in-picture -picture content augmented on top of the physical world. Advertising subsidized neural implants will show us AI-generated content in our dreams. And still, it won't be enough. We will create a special class of consumer AI to read, watch, and listen to the AI content. Will we watch reaction videos of AI watching AI content? Like a vortex of ever-increasing speed, we'll have an entire economy of robots creating for robots. And when we remove scarcity from art, and it becomes so ubiquitous that it is a resource burden, will we have achieved our goals then? Giant warehouses of server farms full of self-generating AI art bots burning electricity while making infinite amounts of NFTs on an endless variety of crypto coins promoted by bots on social media platforms, overrun by bots with bot accounts commenting, buying, and selling all of the mass-produced blockchain NFTs made of AI art. And as we burn the rainforest for energy and run the server farms and strip mine the national parks for precious metals to make the graphics cards and processors to create more AI-generated movies, art, and books more efficiently, will it be enough then? An entire ecosystem of robots and AI doing all of the work, making and consuming all of the entertainment, replicating the most profitable version of human experience and training the humans to be ever more easily controlled by tech bros and politicians. People will never need to lift a finger, as everything will have been automated, and the drive to create will feel pointless, desire to be productive will feel futile. There will be no need for people to make art, write books, solve problems, help each other, be in a relationship, go to a job, go on a vacation, or exist. The existential question, if we remove all barriers to entry, resistance, opposition, struggle, failure, and there is no longer any need or reward to learning, improving, overcoming, or mastering anything, it is even possible in that situation to have joy or fulfillment. But don't worry, we made it cheaper and faster to make money, I mean art, for a little while before nothing else mattered anymore. It's pretty bleak. But you tell me, where else is all of this going to go if we don't curb it now? Don't give the scorpion a ride. Go make stuff.